Very good afternoon. Today we will be learning the image pre-processing techniques where we will learn how to do atmospheric and geometric corrections. The same should have been learnt in your theory classes but today you will learn how to do it on the image itself. First we will just revise how to open the image. For that go to NV. open image file next a window opens where you have to enter the data file name go to the folder where you have saved the data the data used should be the same that you have used in the first exercise it is on the location of practical underscore one and then you have your image with dot l1r extension go to open a window again would open to you where you will be asked to select the hdf data set file there will be five options you have to choose the file itself with dot l1r extension slide number five shows you this and say ok next a window will open where you have to tell which type of data set storage you want to have BSQ, BIL or BIP as told in the last session here we select any of these this is band sequential format BIL is band interleaved by line and BIP is band interleaved by pixel select BIL and say OK now Available band list window will open. In your classroom, it's a simple. To open the image in the color composite, click on RGB color. Select band number 40 for red color gun. Band number 30 for green band number 20 for blue and then click on load RGB this window as a display group will give you the image in standard false color composite this has been already done in your first practical now if you want to open the image in grayscale click on grayscale let us say I select band number 2 and then I say load band now you see here band number 2 opens in the display group as this is one of the bands which has no information it will give you totally black band It was told you in the last session that you have to find out such totally black or totally white bands and the noisy bands because we will need them for atmospheric correction. So the first step today would be the removal of bad bands. I repeat here the bad bands would be those bands which are either uncalibrated or they have an unacceptable noise. You have to find all those bands by visually inspecting the image. In our case, these are such 148 bands which are 
noise free so to subset the image having those 148 calibrated and informative bands go to basic tools and then the option of resize data spatial or spectral click here you will be asked to enter the input file the input file here in this case is the file with .l1r extension select this and say OK. As soon as you click the button OK, the option of spectral subsetting will appear here. You can note here that there are 242 bands right now, but we have to remove the bad bands and get the image finally in say 148 bands. So for that click on spectral subset. A window with file spectral subset option appears. Here you select all those bands which are non-noisy and which are calibrated. As for example Band numbers 1 to 7 are all black, uncalibrated bands. So you start with band number 8 to band number 57. And then again you will find some noisy bands. I am leaving it to you to find out which bands you have to select. For example, in this particular case, I have selected all those 148 bands and then I say OK. Finally click on OK. Slide number 18 gives you the picture and then you will be asked to enter the resize data parameters. Select the type of resampling you want to have. If you want to have the output result in the file, choose the output file name. A window will open where you have to give the name of the output file. After you enter this, the name along with the path of the file will appear in this tab and say OK. The software will take some time to resize the data and such a window will appear. The processing would take some time and finally you will have the image without bad bands. Now once the bad bands are removed you'll have the image for example in this case I have the image with the name bad band underscore remove after bad bands are removed we have to go for the removal of bad columns it may so happen that sometimes you have in your informative bands also some columns having loss of information. Now we have to synthetically correct for this problem. For that let us say we open band number 99 in this case you see band number 99 appears in the selected band tab and then you load the band and you see here a black column is appearing. Now this kind of 
strike is known as bat column we have to remove this so for that the option is go to tools in the image window then go to spatial pixel editor once you click this a window will open you point your cursor on the bad column you will see the column number is 91 which is having all values as 0 now to correct for this go to options in the spatial pixel editor Go to replace selected column with average. Slide number 30 is showing this option. Replace selected column with average. And you can see that now the column number 91 gets values which is average of column number 90 and column number 92 so artificially we can account for this kind of correction but if you open the image again and before that you need to save these changes for that go to file you have the option of save changes to file Click here and say OK. Now you open the band number 99 again. You would see here that now the bad line in this particular area has been removed. Now what you need to do is you have to repeat the process for the whole line. This process needs to be repeated for each bad column in each band. This is a lengthy process but I am leaving it to you. You have to correct the whole image for bad columns also. Now after the bad bands and bad columns have been corrected for, we proceed for atmospheric correction using the utility here flash this uses the radiative transfer model MOTRAN and can account for the atmospherically corrected image the option is available in the main menu bar go to spectral there is an option of flash you can see in slide number 38 click on flash the window will appear asking you to enter the atmospheric correction model input parameters so first you have to input your radiance image for that click on input radiance image it will ask you to select the input file you have to select the file which has removed with its bad columns and there has been corrections done for bad bands now I select bad band remove and I say OK. Next again a window will appear asking for radiance scale factors. Here you need to enter the scale factor file. For that click on read array of scale factors from ASCII file that is the first option 
Now please note here that you have to make an ASCII file in a notepad with scale factors 400 from band numbers 8 to 57 and 800 for rest of the bands. Please make sure that the number of entries of scale factors should be same as the number of bands in the Hyperion image. If you are using some other satellite image, the scale factors would vary. You can find the details in the Hyperion references. Now if you have made the notepad file, you name it as scale underscore factor. This is obviously a text file. For example, I have here the file in this folder. I navigate to it and I say open. Next, it will ask you your output reflectance file. Give the name of an output file in the folder you desire. Next, de define the output directory for flash files. Next, you have to mention the scene center location. Please note that the image here is not having the geographical at long information, but the metadata that comes along with the file gives you the information about the scene center. For the case of Hyperion, four corners, upper left corner, upper right corner, lower left corner and lower right corner would be mentioned. You have to calculate the scene center from these four set of coordinates. In this case, just as an example, we have used the lat long values as 30.21 and 77.86 respectively. Next is you choose the sensor type. Here it is Hyperion. Then you have to choose the sensor altitude. Hyperion is roughly at an altitude of 700 kilometers. It's for you to enter the precise value. Ground elevation for the area of interest. How much above mean sea level? Let us say it's 0 0.600 kilometers here. Pixel size for Hyperion image is 30 meters. Flight date and flight time are mentioned in the metadata file again. You have to enter the data from there. Next, we have to choose the atmospheric model. This is the snapshot taken from the help file of NV. Depending upon the latitude, you, you can choose different atmospheric models. The same can be chosen from humidity values, temperature values and so forth. For example, here for the latitude of 30 degrees, you can choose these depending upon the month you are working with. For example, I have chosen tropical. You can choose at your leisure here depending upon the type of area and season. Next, you have to choose some aerosol model. Number of options would be there including urban, rural, tropospheric and so forth. Let us say I choose rural. It will ask for spectral polishing. It's a smoothing operation. For the time being and for the first run, let us say no. Water retrieval can be obtained if we have bands in that particular ba uh, absorption region. Let me choose no. And then enter the initial visibility value so that it can start with the aerosol prediction. Here for this case, let me say 40 kilometers 
and then apply so this way you can use the flash utility to correct for the atmospheric effect as soon as you say apply it will take some time depending upon the size of data to run the atmospheric correction code now before we move on to geometric correction i would like to have your doubts if any till this position so we can have a break of 5 minutes meanwhile you can ask any problems if you are facing in the execution of these steps okay so we have a question from bharti dasan university whether we can do band bad band removal using adas or not yes you can do but you have to make sure that the software is capable of handling the bulky data set sometimes because if the software is not designed to handle hyperspectral data the processing is slowed down so it's better to use all those softwares which can handle this kind of data sets the other question from iari uh, perhaps there is some confusion in the type of data that they have to use you have to use the same hyperspectral data that was provided to you for practical number 1 we are continuing processing preprocessing all on the same data set now we move on for geometric correction now we understand that the input image which is hyperion image is not having the coordinate information so we have to provide the information about the coordinate system datum from another image or if you have the gps data you can use that also in our case let us use landsat rectified imagery as the base image to correct geometrically the hyperion image so for that before we move on first of all open the hyperion image in display number 1 and landsat image in display number 2 then go to map in the main menu bar the first option is for registration click on that there would be several options how to select the gcps let us say for this case because it is from image to image so you select gcps image to image click on this and another window will appear confirming image to image registration there will be two windows further asking for which display to choose for base image and which one for the wrap image the base image is the image on which you want to apply the geometric correction because you have hyperion image here and wrap image is your landsat image so select base image is your landsat image and wrap ima image is your hyperion image the coordinates are to be taken from base image so click on display number 2 and wrap image for hyperion display number 1 and say okay i repeat to avoid any confusion further base image is the image from which you need to take the coordinate information because this is the landsat image and it is opened in display number 2 so you click display number 2 as base image the wrap image is the image you would like to assign the coordinate system 
so that is the Hyperion image click on that and say ok further a window will open asking you ground control points selection you can choose the degree up to your wish you can see here we have not selected any points yet so it is zero so to select the points first of all navigate to the points you would like to refer to for example this is a boundary of forest where there is a road crossing through the same point you have to identify on the Hyperion image. Once you identify this, go to add point. It will add the first point in your GCP table. Similarly, you select the other point. The selection criteria for GCPs remain the same as you do in any other remote sensing pre-processing. For example here this point has been taken. Similarly you choose more number of points. For example in this case we have selected seven points only for degree one but you see that the RMS error is very high. It's around 0.695845. Make sure that the RMS error per each GCP should be less than 0.5 and the overall RMS error does not exceed 1. If you want to go back and check the GCPs or remove the GCPs you go to the options of order points by error so that you can see which one is the point having the maximum RMS error you can either delete those points or you can adjust their position to decrease the RMS error please note that the points that you select should be well distributed over the whole image. It should not be concentrated in a particular part of the image. Now once you are satisfied with the selection of GCPs, we have to assign the coordinate system. For that go to options in the ground control point selection window go to WAP file because you want to apply the information to all the bands if you want to apply the information only to the bands which are in the display then you can choose the upper option and so forth you can check with all these options for this case, we select WAP file. Another window will be opened where you will be asked to enter the input WAP image. By now, you would have understood that it is your Hyperion image which has been already corrected for atmosphere. So you enter your atmospherically corrected image. can see that it is having 148 bands in the spectral subset tab. Once you select this, another window opens in which you would be asked for registration parameters. You will be asked which method you would like to have. I have chosen polynomial. You can choose any one amongst this. The degree depending upon the type of data. Resampling. Nearest neighbor or bilinear or 
cubic convolution. The same basic concepts would be applied here as you do in other multispectral remote sensing area. Output image extent and then you may output the result either to file or to memory. Let us select the file option. You will be asked to enter the output file name. Navigate to the folder where you want to save the file. Give the name of the image and click open. Now this is how the rectified image would look like. Now if you move your cursor over the image and see the cursor location values, the corresponding latitude, longitude information would be displayed. Now, this is all about the geometric correction. Now some questions would be given to you. You are requested to please send the answers. First question says, you have to list the bad bands out of the 242 bands in the hyperspectral data provided to you. Please list all the bad bands with their number and bad columns per band in the image. For each band, wherever bad columns are appearing, you have to mention the band number and the bad column number. For example, the illustration provided to you here in the session contained a black column number 91 in the band number 99. Similarly, you have to identify other bad columns also for each band in the image. I hope the question is clear. Next question is, in the flash utility, you have to generate three atmospherically corrected images. The options are, first option should be you choose atmosphere as tropical, aerosol model as rural, visibility as 23 kilometers. Second option, atmosphere as mid-latitude summer, aerosol as urban and visibility as 40 kilometers. Third option is atmosphere as mid-latitude winter, aerosol model as tropospherical and visibility as 30 kilometers. Please note all the information should remain same except these three options. Display the three images in three display windows. Check the spectral profiles of vegetation, water body and urban features and use the knowledge of spectral radiometer exercise to find out which one should be the best atmospherically corrected image. This is the second question. Using the three options, you have to find out which one gives you the best result just by visual inspection. Third option, third question is, you have to georeference the given Hyperion image using the Landsat image the way we have done today using first degree polynomial second degree polynomial and third degree polynomial. When you choose different degrees 
for the polynomial, choose different resampling methods also. For example, if you do first degree polynomial, do the georeferencing with nearest neighbor resampling, bilinear resampling, and cubic convolution resampling. The same you should do for second degree and third degree also. And please infer on the results that you have obtained which one gives you the best one. You have to practice the session and submit as an assignment step by step whatever you have done by 11th March 2012. Please note that all this assignment carries a marks, specific mark in the assessment. The final assessment carries marks from these assignments. Now we take a break for 10 minutes and then we'll be back for the interaction session. So we have some questions here. There's a question again from Bharti Dasan University. Whether uh, we can download Hyperion image from internet? Yes, of course you can, but for that the EO1 Hyperion data should be available in the archive because EO1 is a tasking um, mission so many a times you will not find the area of your interest covered in that. For that you have to request for the acquisition of image but otherwise for test images or for practice images you can always download the data from the archive which is there on the internet. A related question from uh, JP University is there some specific site from where you can download Hyperion data? Yes, it's there on USGS Glovis, United States Geological Survey. They provide the Glovis utility for uh, downloading the Hyperion data sets. So you can always browse through those uh, options. Then we have another question, how to select ground control points from base and wrap images. The procedure remains essentially the same the way you do for a multispectral image. In case of your base image, you can either get the GCPs by visual inspection or if you have conducted the field survey, then you can overlay all those GCPs using the GPS locations over your image and then you can point out which are those locations. Now on the base image you have to visually inspect for all those locations which are there in the uh, base image. The image for which the, uh, the coordinates have to be assigned for that image you have to visually inspect the image for the corresponding uh, points on the base image. Uh, of course the locations could be uh, the crossings of roads or crossing of canal and road or could be the boundaries of permanent forests or such features which are permanent so that if the images are even of different time or different season the points are still visible on the two images. So that is the procedure how you select GCPs. But depending upon the polynomial you are working with, the number has to be decided. For example, if you are working with uh, degree n polynomial for uh, georeferencing the image, the number of points should be more than number of degree plus 1 raised to the power 2. So I hope I'm clear on this question. If you have some more questions, please ask your queries. You can send to chat. Okay, so if there are no further questions for the time being, we wind up the session for today.
for any further queries you can always uh, send your email at uh, email queries to my email address which would be displayed or any queries regarding how to uh, process the image how to uh, submit the assignment or um, to understand the questions that I have asked you or any other queries regarding the similar session you may please send your queries to my email address uh, that's it for the session good day thank you